Driving across the Great Plains, you'll see that there's an area where we've got a long strip of crop, and then there's a long strip next to it that's bare, and that's called fallow. We don't grow anything on it for that year. That started in Montana because we wanted to allow the soil to recharge its moisture during the time that there's nothing on it. There are many problems with fallow. It can increase saline seep, it can increase nitrate leaching. Um, it can decrease organic matter in the soil, it can increase the potential for erosion, and it can decrease microbiological activity. The growers that we're targeting in this study are growers in the Golden Triangle area where there's still a lot of summer fallow usage. We feel there's a great opportunity there for growers to implement cover crops. We've really been looking at it as a soil building kind of tool, and so I've probably done more work with legume green manures than certainly anybody else I can think of at this particular time. We've looked at peas and lentils, we've looked at winter peas, spring peas, uh, different uh, termination methods, tillage, no-till, uh, organic, just a lot of different uh, parameters really trying to see if there's something to this, this uh, green manure that could be profitable. There's been quite a bit of work done here by Perry Miller and his colleagues on single species cover crops. And what Perry has generally found is that by growing or seeding these species early in the year, early April, and terminating them around the time of first bloom, that yields in protein the next year can be comparable to following summer fallow. Today, we don't have any research data on long-term benefits of multi-species cover crop, which I suppose leads to the answer the question of why we're doing this study. We were hearing a lot of questions from growers about cover crops. We were finding out that people were investigating cover crops, trying them out. So our biggest goal was to find out what works well for the grower and what doesn't work so well. In addition, we did the study because we wanted to find out whether there were certain crops that, that perform certain functions better than other crops. And until the study was done in Montana, we didn't have any data to, to determine that. A cover crop is a crop that's planted primarily to enhance soil quality or to manage weeds or pests. A mono cover crop would be one species of crop such as peas or lentils or cereal rye, and a mixed cover crop would be two or more species. It may be that multiple plant species provide different beneficial effects to the soil. For example, planting a fibrous rooted crop can provide extra organic matter to the soil, while if you're mixing that with a nitrogen fixing species, that would provide nitrogen to the soil. If you're planting a deep rooted crop, that could break up a hard clay pan in your soil. So each of those plants provides a different function. We designed this study by starting out choosing four plant functional groups, nitrogen fixers, brassicas, fibrous roots, and tap roots. Within each of those plant functional groups, we selected two plant species. Our study is investigating the effects of different species on soil quality, meaning chemical and physical and biological components of the soil, and is also looking at the effects of different cover crops on the subsequent grain yield and protein. The specific goals on our farm with cover crops and our crop diversity has been to increase organic matter uh, so we can in turn increase our water holding capacity because of the low rainfall area we're in. Um, one of the big things with the crop diversity has been uh, basically controlling some of our, our weed issues with uh, traditional weed fallow rotations and uh, increasing our, our grazing season too for our livestock herd. These mixed species cover crops are great forage for livestock and there's also the idea that perhaps a mixed species cover crop stimulates soil biological activity more than a single species cover crop. 
The short term cons of using a cover crop are water use. If you've had a dry year, that cover crop might use extra water and decrease yields in the subsequent cash crop. Also, timing. A farmer has a lot to do, and this is one more thing on their plate. And weed control can be an issue. If those weeds aren't controlled prior to planting the cover crop, they can really get away on you and really create a huge mess. It appears that the long-term benefits of cover crops would be increased organic matter, decreased nitrate leaching. Soil microbial activity is likely going to improve with that increase in organic matter. And organic matter is useful for water retention. It's useful for decreasing soil erosion and for increasing nutrient availability. So we believe in the long run that cover crops are going to be very beneficial to both the environment and to the farmer. In the study that we're currently conducting, I would like to see large enough differences in physical, biological, and chemical components of the soil that we can say that these cover crops are performing functions that are very different from each other so that we could tell a grower that has a say a hard clay pan these are the crops you should use to break that up and we can tell this other grower who has low organic matter these are the cover crops that are better at increasing organic matter so if a farmer doesn't know anything really about cover crops but, but is interested in getting started i would have them contact their local uh, natural resource conservation service office to get started because they that office can provide them with a list of cover crops that are appropriate for their region and some information on where to find the seeds and how to properly manage those cover crops. We would love to hear from growers their actual experiences out in the field. We'd love to hear feedback.